Thanks for joining me for a yin practice. This practice is going to be focusing predominantly on the front of the thighs, the hip flexors, um, the psoas to be more specific. So you will need a few props. A block will be handy. A book is a good alternative. A blanket or a big towel and a bolster or a cushion. So we're going to start lying down in what we call pontoon and it's on the back of your body and use your bolster. If you don't have a bolster and it's just a cushion, I'd say put a block just underneath it to build it up away from the ground a little more. But um, if it's a fairly sturdy cushion, you should be fine. So you will be coming down onto the back of your body. Good to bend the knees and then lift up the hips and slip the bolster or the stack of cushion with a block underneath it, underneath the bum. And you want to get it fairly low down, so low sacrum. And then straighten your legs long down the mat. Just see how that feels. And if it's a little um, uncertain for the low back, you're welcome to re-bend the knees and just keep them bent up. Otherwise, legs straight is good. Arms can be down by your side, or my preference would be arms overhead behind. Whatever you choose, be able to relax here. You don't want to be here and just need to fidget and shift constantly. You want to be able to just close down the eyes and breathe smoothly and clearly all the way down into the belly and all the way up to the chest. So take any last fidgets that you need to, any adjustments of the physical shape. And then close down your eyes. And we can begin our practice here. Take a really big breath in. Pause at the peak of your inhale. Exhale completely through mouth. Pause at empty. Big filling breath in all the way up. Let that breath go. And find just a natural breath. Seeking to relax your body fully over the bolster or the cushion underneath you. Finding some space in the front of the hips. These tissues can get short and tight from too much sitting or even like really repetitive action, running, cycling. And then they can get a bit bulgy and kind of stuck like that. So lying here and just stretching out the front of the hips for a couple of minutes will just help begin to reverse some of that. Breathe really steadily and evenly. Allow the body to get heavy on the mat and in particular the hips heavy on the bolster. Really surrender and sink in. Some days we come to our practice and our minds are just still and steady. We're really receptive. And other days, still distracted. It's harder to connect in with the sensations in your body.
I think on days like that, if you just stick with it, if you just stay really patient, not overanalyzing or judging, I'm this because of that, I'm that because of this, but just notice, maybe name, and then let it be. And through that type of kindness, that type of just acceptance for what is on any given time, the mind will begin to steady and the focus will come. Take a few more breaths here. We're going to keep the bolster where it is. We're not done with it just yet. But for a moment to release the low back, hug the knees in towards your chest. Because the bolster's there, you'll be able to get the knees much closer towards the armpits. You can just hold on to the back of the legs and interlace the fingers. It's particularly nice doing that. And just pause for a moment. One more breath. Right. Release the interlace of the hands. And keeping the bolster here, just shift your weight over to the right side of your bolster so you have some space over to the left. And then wrap your left leg over your right. So I want you to think of that sort of eagle bind of legs. And drop your knees over towards the left. And you'll notice that you don't want your knees really high up to the chest. It's less of a supine twist and more of a side of hip IT band opener we want. You'll see here if you're looking at the video, I begin to straighten my right leg, not all the way, a little bit. And my left leg is just wrapping around the top of my right to just really help encourage a weight downwards. By having the bolster, we're just taking the ground further away, so the foot's probably not all the way on the ground, although some of your feet might be on the ground, and that would be absolutely okay too. And if you can see here, I'm pretty straight in my right leg, but it's quite far down at an angle, and then my left ankle or my left calf is really just resting on the outer, it's actually on my outer knee, it could be higher or lower depending. And then with your torso, you can reach that right arm out wide, or you might even just take it up and overhead behind you. This is fairly strong, so be careful here. And the further you kick the heels down towards the foot of the mat, the deeper stretch you're going to feel all down the right waistline, the outer edge of right hip, maybe even the outer edge of the right thigh. can feel a bit strange, can definitely feel a bit tight through the low back. I'm not going to be here for super long, maybe about a minute. Just be aware where you get the feedback from the tissues in your body. Again, don't try and analyze that too much. Just be like, ah, oh, right side body, or wherever it might be for you. The first part of understanding is just becoming aware of 
and yin gives us an opportunity to become aware of some unfamiliar sensations, some tissues that might be less frequently utilized. Let's take another four or five breaths aside. Can uncross the legs and just bring it back to center. And once more, you might like to just hug the knees in just for a moment and get rid of anything that might have built up in the low back. And then shift your hips over to the left side. Bring the knees up and then eagle wrap your right leg. Maybe you take that double bind. I prefer not to personally. And begin to drop the knees over towards the right. Left arm can come out or even up behind. And you definitely don't want those knees too high up towards the chest. You can straighten that left leg any amount. Let's have a little play around. When you're looking for something... Um, Left side body, left outer edge of hip, maybe even down the side of the thigh, at least outer edge of hip. And once you've found something good, just try and be still. And you never want to work right at your edge. You want to come to that really safe place. I'd say it's about your 60 or 70% edge. It's your safe edge. It's, it's yin, remember? So there's no pushing and there's no pulling. We just use the body and the shapes, and gravity, supports and props. It definitely doesn't need to be a comfortable practice. It shouldn't be painful. But a comfortable practice, no, it's not in. You should be able to relax though in the shapes. Take a little longer here.
Okay, another big breath in. Mm, full exhale. Be really careful, unravel your legs, roll back onto the back, hug the knees in. As you hug the knees in, just press your hands to the bolster and press it away from you. You can slip it off to the side of the mat for a moment. Just let your legs go long down the mat. Take a moment here in your rebound or shavasana. Just to suddenly be aware of the kind of whooshes and rushes of the blood flow returning to normal. Any energetic feedback. And one more breath. Can bend the knees up and just either rocking to your side or straight on up. And you'll definitely need most of your props here. So come up and over onto your all fours. Just take your blanket and take your left knee to your blanket and take your block to the top of the mat. And cross your bolster crossways. Step your right foot up and over the bolster, sole of foot to mat. And you might like to slip your left knee fairly far behind you. You definitely want to keep it on the, on the blanket. And let me just pull my jumper up so you can see. Now take your block or your book or your dog food tin or whatever you're using and pop it on top of your pillow so it supports the underside of your right thigh. You want that support there. And here we're looking for a deeper stretch right into the front of that left thigh, into the front of the left hip. More or less, your right foot will be directly underneath your knee. Back toes tucked or untucked is a personal preference. I think untucked is probably nicer. And you get a deeper stretch there as well. You just continue the stretch down the whole front of the leg. And just take a breath or two here just to get settled. Right, and then you can close down your eyes or just soften the gaze. You're here just for about a minute. It's not a super long hold. You should be able to let your hips get pretty heavy. Take another three breaths. And drop the block and slip it away. Heel toe your right foot a little bit wider. And then walk both hands over to the left side of your mat. 
You can let that right knee drop wide. You can definitely press the outer edge of the right knee away from you. You can see here the foot's come to the outside edge. Let's take a few moments and you'll be deeper into the right hip and a little into the right side body. Take one more breath here. And walk your hands back to the center, maybe up onto the bolster. Pick up the weight of the pelvis and go on and slip that right leg back. And just pause and you can sit back on your heels for two or three breaths. When you're ready, you can, of course, make your way into the other side. Right knee to blanket. Slip it fairly far back. Left foot more or less under the knee, give or take. And then slip the block high up underneath the back of the thigh. Kind of nearly at your buttock crease. And then let's make any little adjustments so you can feel something really good in the front of your right thigh, in front of your right hip. Toes untucked would be better, but tucked is okay as well. And you can let the arms dangle, fingers down. If this is altogether too strong for you, you can even drop forward and take your fingertips down to the ground, or you can pop your hands on blocks here too. And you also don't have to have this support here, but I recommend it. Again, it's just about a minute or so here. Give or take. Two, three more breaths. It's one of those postures that is really uncomfortable. It's pretty strong. It's not very nice. We just lean into that and allow it to happen. Slip the block out and maybe heel toe the left foot a little wider. Foot may or may not turn out. And then just walk the hands around towards the right. You can even rest your hands on top of the block if you need some elevation off the ground. You might press that left knee away from you. Turn the head and tuck the chin in towards my right collarbone. And 
last couple of breaths. It's like a little addition, an add-on for extra pleasure. <laughs> One more breath here. Your hands can walk back to center. Pick up the weight of the pelvis and step that left foot back. Good. And come and sit down upon your heels again briefly. Just notice. Let the body settle down. Finding our way into ideally our full saddle posture, but you can do the half variation as well. We're not going to be in it for super long, mostly because this is a fairly short practice, but also because, well, most of us don't particularly enjoy this posture. I use the blanket here just to support and to soften the landing underneath my knees. And you're going to take your knees pretty wide and your toes together, and you'll sit back on your heels. And by taking your knees pretty wide and sitting back on your heels, it actually should be relatively okay for most of your knees. Some of you may just go, mm -mm, no thank you. And you'll be taking this in a single leg variation. I'll give you something totally different. And your bolster can go lengthways behind you. You may want to pop a prop up underneath the bolster. That can also be quite nice here. Let me just show you what that looks like. I like that. So toes together, sitting on the heels, knees nice and wide apart. And you can stay upright, you can stay like this. You might lean back and you might just support your hands behind you like so. You might come all the way back onto the bolster. So there's a lot here for the front of the legs, for the knees, and uh, there's a little back bend as well. So it's kind of a, a big posture to be in for any length of time. So those of you who this is just not okay for, for whatever reason, come in the single leg variation, just release one of your legs and keep the other back like this and I'll tell you when it's half time and you can switch around. And for those that still think that this is not gonna be okay for them, have your bolster and your block set up in this way and instead take your soles of feet together and your knees wide into a reclined butterfly posture and it's not going to be for your thighs, it'll be for the inner thighs, but that's okay too. It's quite nice. Otherwise, just close down the eyes and kind of just rest in. And resist the temptation to fidget and to fuss. If you're sitting with any pain, please don't do that. Come on out and adjust. You can feel a fair amount of pressure in and around the knees. A little bit of pressure's okay. Pain, definitely no. We're pretty significantly restricting blood flow by closing through the back of the knees. And when we reopen, when we re-lengthen the leg, that fresh blood will just kind of gush through and really nourish the tissues around the knees, keep them nice and healthy, hydrated. It's kind of what we're doing here, stressing the tissues so then we can release and they can get a rush of the good stuff.
A smooth, settled breath will help you stay present and focused. Think about, if you're on a single leg variation, you can switch sides now, about halfway there. Those of you who are in the full variation, it will probably be getting quite intense by now. Let's try and stay with it for a little longer. And if you can hear that through the microphone, there's a huge rainstorm happening here at the moment. <laughs> it's pretty loud on the studio roof and outside, so if you can hear that through the mic, apologies. It's actually quite nice. to come out of this. You can go pretty slowly. You can press your hands down as you lift up. Oh, it's a lot. And shift your props off to the side in the front of the mat. And just slip all the way up and over. Come down onto your belly. Don't worry about the blanket. To take your elbows wide and stack your palms, rest your forehead to the mat, and really relax. And you'll feel a lot around the knees and the top of the feet, the legs. Okay. Take it back up. And block out in front of you. Bolster maybe in front of you as well. And let's go with your left leg. Pigeon pose or swan we call it in yin. The left knee forward. Toes over to the right side of the mat. And I like to get my blanket and kind of roll it and double it up and pop it underneath my left hip here. I find that really comfy. And don't be tempted just to fold straight forward. Take a moment, just arriving upright. You can really slip that right knee back. And when you think you might be ready, 
You can then go on and rest chest or belly to bolster. And I'm gonna stay pretty upright to protect the microphone, but you guys are gonna drop all the way down and you can take your forehead to the bolster and you can even stack your head on the block and block on the bolster. Really, you're limited by your own creativity with your prop use. Anything goes, so give it all a try and see which one serves you today. Just settle on in. Still in those postures, it can be really nice to hold for an extra long hold, five minutes or so. I'm running out of time a little bit here, but if you want to stay longer on each side, you can just time yourself. You can pause the, the video and stay a little bit longer. Um, it's been pretty deep into the hips and the legs and stuff, so you may feel like enough is enough. Either way, take about three more breaths on this side. Slip this back into a brief child's pose. Don't worry about the props. Come on up and just come into the other side. So right leg forward, knee up by wrist, toes off to the left, prop underneath that right thigh. If you want, you absolutely don't have to. I like it. And then scooch that left leg long behind. Take a moment upright just to make sure you're arrived and it feels all okay for the hips and the knees. And then when you're ready, you can come on down and bolster maybe lengthways, sometimes even just a block under the forehead is good. Get creative. Again, this side I'm gonna stay pretty upright because of the microphone.
Let's take a little bit longer here. Just letting the body marinate in the shape and the space that we're creating in some parts and the compression and the closing of other parts. And the deep breath that clears the whole body and just sort of dusts it out. Again, you're so welcome to stay longer. And if you're ready, let's press on up, lift the chest. Next time, just swing that left leg around in front of you. Slip off any props you might have. Slip them out of the way. And just pause. You can lean back in your hands for a tick. Let's notice what's going on down the legs and around the hips. Okay. You can be a little yang about this one. You can sit up nice and tall and then take a juicy forward fold. I like to be somewhat active in my legs. I really need to stretch out my low back here. You can let the head hang. If you prefer something more passive, that's fine too. You can pop a bolster up around the belly and round over that. For me, this feels really good though. You don't need to be here for long. Let me just five breaths. One more breath. Use your hands, walk your way up. And just come all the way back onto the back of your body into Shavasana. Again, resist the fidgets. Lie completely still, noticing everything that's happening to you, to your body, within your body. Being aware of how you lie in space. And don't be in a rush. Shavasana is a vital part of the practice. It's so important. It allows everything to just, all your tissues to make sense of what they've just been put through. It's like a, just a gift of stillness. It's an opportunity for deep listening and really from that place of deep listening, it can be really you can really contemplate. So enjoy your Shavasana. Please stay as long as you wish. I'm gonna leave you here. So of course, thank you for your practice, for your time. I hope your body feels nice after that. Namaste.